It's 2021, which means we are now entering the start of the first year with the next generation of consoles. Both systems had pretty solid launches, except for, you know, the part where there wasn't enough supply and no one could buy one. Hopefully that changes soon, but in the meantime, there are still plenty of other things we want to see out of the next generation to make it even better. Don't expect to see more games on this list because it's kind of obvious and we all know more games are coming out this year. In fact, if you want to watch a list of the hottest games coming out in 2021, we already have a video of that and you can go watch it right after this. We'd also appreciate a like and sub so we can keep making more videos like this for you. Alright, let's start with customization. We all love to customize our systems and make them our own, and right now our options are rather limited. Taking a look at the Xbox UI, we can see that it is uh, the exact same as the previous generation. You can pick the color, and you can set an image as your background. The only thing different is the new dynamic theme, which is nice, looks good, but it's not enough. We'd love to see more dynamic themes, whether it's new patterns or open up the floodgates for game-specific dynamic themes similar to what we saw on the PS4 and PS3. Speaking of PlayStation, the PS5 has absolutely zero customization. This is a tricky one, as games and apps on the interface are designed to fill the whole screen, which leaves no room for customizable themes. The best we could get at the moment is a change in color and music in the settings menu, which would be nice, but limited when compared to what people are used to coming from PS4. Honestly, hard to say if we'll ever see a return to themes for the PS5, but without a major update to the UI, it's unlikely for now. We also don't have much in the way of hardware variety either. Don't expect any console redesigns for a couple years, but we could potentially get alternate models that offer more hard drive space, something that the PS5 in particular really needs. But again, there are enough issues keeping up with supply for the current model, so until that's sorted, we might not get anything new. However, we might get a few color options, most likely in the form of game-specific bundles like ones for Halo Infinite or the new God of War. But we all know what we really want, that sexy black PS5. We already know you're going to give in and make it at some point, Sony, so stop teasing and give it to us already. Controller colors would also be nice. In addition to the black and white options, Xbox already offers a blue controller and recently revealed the Pulse Red. They're also bringing back their custom controller store called the Xbox Design Lab sometime this year. No word from Sony on alternate colors for the DualSense, and we'd like to see some of it this year as well, ideally in black. Speaking of the DualSense, it really is one of the best parts of the PS5. I made a whole video talking about how amazing its haptic feedback and adaptive triggers are for shooters. It really does feel next-gen. Which makes the Series X slash S controller disappointing in comparison. I do actually quite like it. It's got a nice feel, the D-pad is a big improvement, and I like the grips they put on the triggers. But it still feels undeniably behind in innovation when compared to the DualSense. Microsoft seems to have realized this because, in a recent survey, they asked if Xbox owners felt like they were missing out on features that the PlayStation controllers have. Yes, Microsoft, and you should absolutely steal that sh** and put it into Xbox controllers. Not to say that Xbox doesn't have a premium controller of its own, the Xbox Elite controller comes with plenty of its own unique features, but it doesn't come packaged with a Series X slash S, and it runs you almost $200. I think if Microsoft really wants to impress, they need to up their game of the standard controller that everyone gets. And honestly, this would be a win for PS5 owners as well. Adaptive triggers are cool, but do take extra work to implement, and it might not feel worth it for third-party devs to spend time on features only accessible for one system. So, if both systems have it, we're likely to get it in more games, which will spread the wealth of that next-gen feel that the adaptive triggers and haptic feedback bring. Now another concept that feels truly next-gen is the ability to play games with your friends regardless of the platform they're on. 
That's right, I'm talking about crossplay, which, yes, is something we've seen more of in the last several years, but we still aren't at the point where crossplay and cross saves have become a standard feature in most games. I was really hoping for crossplay to be a big push with the next generation, but Sony and Microsoft haven't really done anything on their end to encourage crossplay, leaving it up to developers to implement it. I do believe crossplay will slowly continue to grow, but something that would help push it forward is a way for players to interact with each other across systems. Having the PS5 and Series X/S so closed off from each other feels dated at this point, and what we need is a unified friends list and party chat system. Otherwise, we'll need to continue to rely on individual developer and publisher user accounts to make crossplay work, which is a huge pain on the consumer level. I'm looking at you, Ubisoft Connect. I don't really expect Microsoft and Sony to play nice and work directly with each other, but perhaps a third party such as Discord could come in and help bridge the gap. Now something that has been a major focus of the next generation is backwards compatibility. Microsoft has been carrying over their excellent back compat library to the Series X/S, and Sony has been catching up by making almost all of the PS4's library available on PS5. But there's always more both systems can do. For Xbox, that means bringing back their backwards compatibility program, which they put on hold in 2019 so that the team could focus on development for the Series consoles. Now that the systems are out, there's an opportunity to bring back the program. After all, there are still a couple Xbox 360 games we'd like to see made available, and we've only ever got a handful of Xbox Originals, and there are still a lot of great games to mine from that generation. But even more importantly, back when the Xbox One X came out, a number of back compat titles got Series X enhancements, letting these games run at native 4K. If you've checked out some of these games, like Gears of War 3 or Red Dead Redemption, then you know how transformative these upgrades can be. Sadly, that list of games remains rather small. Now is the perfect time to bring back 4K enhancements to older games. On the PS5's end, there is admittedly less to work with. As much as I'd love to see them bring back older generations such as the PS3, PS2, and even PS1 to the system, I just don't see it happening. It requires a lot of work on Sony's part, and they seem pretty happy using PS Now as their way to play games from those generations. But Microsoft did surprise everyone with their back compatibility program, so who knows. A more realistic expectation would be PS4 games getting patches to take advantage of the PS5 hardware. Ghost of Tsushima is the shining example, where thanks to a patch, the game runs at 60fps even on its resolution mode, giving you the best possible experience. Meanwhile, God of War still makes you choose between a high resolution at a locked 30fps or 60fps but locked at 1080p. It would be nice to see more PS4 exclusives receive similar patches that unlock their true potential the way Ghost of Tsushima has. Games like Shadow of the Colossus, Horizon Zero Dawn, Bloodborne, Death Stranding, The Last of Us Part 2, Bloodborne, Uncharted 4, The Last Guardian, and Bloodborne, to name a few. But it is worth keeping in mind that these patches would be dependent on the developers of those games, and it's up to them to decide if it's worth the time and money to go back and patch them. So we'll just have to hope for the best. Quick Resume is a nifty little feature on the series consoles that lets you run multiple games at the same time and switch back and forth between them on the fly. But it's got some issues that need sorting. Quick Resume can run up to three Series X S games at a time, or five for back compatible games. If you're somebody that bounces between games a lot, it's possible to go over the limit, in which case the system will boot older games off Quick Resume and shut them down without telling you. Adding a little notification that lets you know your game is going to close would be quite helpful. The other pain about Quick Resume is that currently not all games work with it, and there's no clear way to know which do from the library, which kind of makes the whole feature mm, a bit of a gamble. Until every game becomes compatible, Xbox should add a visual indication that the game is Quick Resume compatible and you're safe to leave the game on without fear of losing progress. The PS5 it doesn't have Quick Resume. We'd love to see it be added in a future update, 
if that's even possible. But keep in mind that Quick Resume requires some hard drive space to hold each game's cache, meaning the inclusion of such a feature would further reduce the system's already limited storage capacity. Speaking of limited storage, there are a few things the PS5 could do to dramatically help gamers deal with the limited space available. For one, there is currently no options for expanding the storage needed to play PS5 games. SSDs need to be fast enough to be compatible, and Sony needs to properly test third-party SSDs. Hopefully that information comes out soon, as space is already running out. Another thing Sony should consider is letting you store PS5 games on an external hard drive. Xbox Series lets you do this, and no, you won't be able to play the game, but at the very least you don't need to delete it and re-download it, taking up precious bandwidth data. No option is present on the PS5, and you have no choice but to delete your game if you need to make space. Okay, time to rapid fire a couple small but important improvements we'd like to see. The PS5 should add folder organization to help players navigate their massive libraries. Xbox should let you claim your free Games with Gold games without automatically starting the download. It's annoying, and it should give people a prompt to add to your library like the PS5 does. Trying to quickly access the trophy list of the game you're playing is not as smooth of a process as it is on PS4, and adding a trophy option to the control center to check your progress would help. Also, the trophy menu itself has a rather large UI, which makes looking through the list tedious. Adding an alternate view that features a more condensed list would be appreciated. Xbox Series X/S's dedicated share button is a nice improvement, but the gallery menu itself is a bit clunky and could use some work. However, major brownie points for the gallery working with the Xbox phone app, automatically sending screenshots and videos there. It's absolutely something Sony should do with the PS5 and the PlayStation app. Whew. Okay, that was a lot. If we missed anything you want to see for the PS5 and Xbox Series X slash S, go ahead and throw it in the comments. As a reminder, if you want to see a video listing the biggest next generation games coming out this year, you can click on the link right here. Have a wonderful day, and let's all hope that Sony and Microsoft can sort out the whole supply and demand issue soon.